वेलकम टू बिग बास्केट नाउ प्रेजेंट्स द आरसीबी पॉडकास्ट In 2008 he single handedly changed the way cricket would be played over the years to come with the grandest of opening to the IPL thanks to his swashbuckling century after his retirement he took it to the next level with the now famous aggressive approach to cricket with baz ball one of the most destructive batters and shrewd captains ever to play cricket and an equally sharp coach i have with me new zealand and former rcb cricketer brendan mccallum welcome to the rcb podcast baz thank you very much nice to be here Earlier it was the player, now the coach. You have a way of being in the headlines. <laughs> oh, I guess it's very fortunate, right? I've had uh, I've had a great life so far in the game, and it's given me it's given me everything. Um, obviously, as a player, I was uh, I really grew up in in cricket, um, and now as a coach, I'm getting opportunities to try and take pressure away from players and and um, and getting to see them realise their talent. So I feel very privileged and, and very humbled, and it's it's nice to be here. Talk to me about your journey as a cricketer, and then now being as a coach. I'm sure it's very self-reflective, and there are opportunities where you see I can definitely be corrective in someone's career. Yeah, look, I think as a player, I was um, I was never the greatest player. I had my I had my moments. Uh, I embraced inconsistency later in my career, which, funnily enough, freed me up and and got me and made me more consistent as a player because I wasn't so bound by the fear of failure. Um, and perfection I was just happy to try and immerse myself in in the game and and try and take the opposition on and and it got the most out of me as a player and it, it kind of was the catalyst I think for my coaching career is if I'm given this opportunity to work with these talented players if I could get better in the back end of my career through reducing fear of failure being more positive in moments and taking the aggressive options when when they present themselves and being where my feet were were in each and every day so I could actually identify the opportunities then that's got to work as a coach with these players too and now I've given the opportunity to work with the England guys who are incredibly talented um and try and add a bit of that mentality to it I think we're seeing that that the outcome is that these guys are are starting to perform really really well and and that's the job as as a coach is to make your players feel 10 foot tall and bulletproof and and that's certainly my objective बस ये बोलना यही तुम्हारा ऐड सही है यार नाउ डिलीवरिंग इन टेन मिनट्स व्हाट्स ऑल द बज अबाउट Baz ball. Let's talk about it. Well, firstly, I don't like the term. It's a media term which was made up and for the for the day that they can then potentially attack it. So I come from a very humble background. Um I don't get too high when things are good and I don't get too low when things aren't. So to have something and align to you is whilst it's flattering to a degree, it's also in, in, uh, makes it feel quite uncomfortable too. Um and also I think it takes away from from what the the team is going what they're trying to achieve and you know it's a collective approach led by the skipper and and Ben Stokes who him and I are very aligned with with how we want to lead the team and and very similar in personalities and in, in regards to playing the game and and you know I think by by throwing that term over it it sort of dumbs down the the level of thought and investment that the guys have been making in in uh, what we're trying to achieve as a team are we trying to play more aggressive cricket of course we are are we trying to trying to entertain crowds all around the world absolutely uh, have we got a responsibility to try and inspire the next generation of cricketers in England and around the world for sure if that's uh, that's that's our objective and and if someone puts a name around it so be it we did ask mo bobat about the same thing and he told us that you want us to think that you don't like the term <laughs> <laughs> i don't like the term there's nothing there's nothing um outside of that it's, Mar is cheeky sometimes isn't it? <laughs> yeah, he is. Well, now he's got the big job here too. He sounds like he might have grown a leg or two. <laughs> right. <laughs> See the cricket ball hit the cricket ball that very much resonates with the way you played. 
when you were playing the game of cricket actively, Brendan. Is that how it streamed on to come into a coaching philosophy as such? Yeah, look, we don't really even talk like that, to be honest. What we talk about is, um, with the ball in hand, it's, it's how do you try and take wickets? So what, how do you work towards mode dismissal um, when you've got the bat in hand? It's, it's trying to identify, is it time to absorb pressure or is it time to put pressure back on the opposition? If that is the case, then are you courageous enough to take that, that step? And also in the field, we, we want to chase the ball hard to the boundary because that shows that you're fully invested in where this team's going and, and what it's trying to achieve. So it's it's not rocket science, um, but that then allows the mindset to be free for talent to then come out. How guys, what that talent looks like when it comes out, um, we have an idea of certain players we want, um, but when we've seen guys scoring at strike rates of 150, 160 in, in test matches, when you're seeing the amount of sixes which are hit, when you're seeing the way that these guys are, are currently playing, to me it's, it's validation of, of creating a, a, a framework where guys feel trust, they feel allowed to, to go out there and be the best versions of themselves. And then I think you see what, what happens from there. So, yeah, it's, it's a really nice place to be at the moment. It's, obviously there's challenges which come. 2-0 down in the Ashes was a big challenge for us. But that's when you've got to hold the fort even more. That's when it's really important um, to, to remain calm again. We've got a saying on our side that, that others may be better, but none will be braver. And I genuinely believe that. And that's why we've got to keep the language. We've got to te- keep talking day in, day out. And we get the best creators out of it. There's always resistance to change. Uh, but I think the mindset that you spoke about, that the complete team rallied behind the concept as such. Talk to me about how challenging that was. Well, it actually wasn't that bad because um, when I took over the job, obviously England were one from 17 under the previous um, period. So they were ready for change. They had a thirst for change. Talent in England is not a problem. Um, So it was a matter of trying to unlock all of that. Well, one of the great things is having a charismatic leader and and we've got one in Ben Stokes. He's one that, he's a player that people will follow. Um, The guys, they know he can do some brilliant things himself but he'll never ask them to do something he won't do them, He won't do himself. And I think that's allowed it to, to gather speed and it's allowed my messaging to, to resonate with the players and, f- and for their performances to, to be so strong uh, early in this regime. Um, let's, let's hope it's nowhere near the ceiling of where we think we can take it. We will be challenged. India will be challenged, will be hard work. But I think we've still got a lot of room to grow within our setup and, and that's the encouraging aspect. Right. बस ये बोलना है यही तुम्हारा ऐड सही है यार नाउ डिलीवरिंग इन टेन मिनट विनिंग एंड लूजिंग पार्ट ऑफ द गेम बट हाउ एग्जैक्टली डू यू डील विद फेलियर्स बैस आई थिंक आई सी रियली लाइक I don't get too high when things are good and I don't get too low when things aren't. I, I can handle failure. Um, you know, sometimes when you present opportunities to other people, they take them. And if they take them, then fair play. You, you doff your cap and you, and you walk away and you look forward to your next opportunity. And, and you know, I think that's, that's the mentality I've always had. And I think it allows you to be a little bit more in control in pressure moments if you're not so married to the the position of winning or losing. So, um, you know, whether that's just the way I've always been, I don't know. Some people would say that that's not competitive enough. Um, but for me, the competition is with yourself. Competition is how do I get the most talent out of myself. It's not necessarily winning or le- losing, even though we get judged on that, that's our currency. You know, for me, it's how do I get the most out of my player to get the best out of himself and and that's that's what I judge myself on. We see the sport changing, we see the pace in which the game is played is changing. Is there a change in mindset with Gen Z cricketers versus cricketers who have been part of the team and how do you change the way you communicate to them? I don't think you have to do too much in terms of really? communication. I think I love people, right? So I love spending time with people and that's that's in all walks of life, you know. You, doesn't matter where they come from, doesn't matter sort of how big a star or, or how new to the game they are. To me, it's, it's an opportunity to get to know someone, to build a relationship with someone, because ultimately I'm going to try and get the best out of them and they're under 
when they're under my watch. So, you know, I think there's different ways and different techniques, of course, which we can to deal with people. Obviously, younger people feel a little less confrontational if you sit side on with them than, say, if you you sit um, front on like, like some of the more old surly people might. So there's different techniques and there's different things that we can do. But fundamentally, you know, I think the game is in good health because we have T20 cricket has exploded. It's grabbing the younger generation of talent pools around the world. You can make a fantastic living out of the game. You can travel the world. You can play on, under the brightest lights in the, in the biggest stadiums. Um, that's inspiring them. Test cricket's been around for 100 years. We've still got people who are, who are later in their life who are still married to Test cricket. We're so lucky we've got all these different formats yeah. that we're able to have such a diverse um, following across all of our cricketing um, public. So, you know, I say more the merrier and, and there's an opportunity out there for everyone and, and, you know, the fact that we're bringing these young people in. Obviously, we've got to be aware of how to deal with them, um, different techniques to deal with them, but, you know, fundamentally, it's another opportunity to get the most out of talent. Show them the bad way as such. Baz, you've been one of the most hardest cricket cricketing ball hitters out there, and I think you've earned the respect of every RCB fan. <laughs> and how many times have people come up to you and spoken about the opening IPL game when you scored those 158 runs? Talk to me about what you remember from that night. Yeah, well, firstly, um, you know that you are bang on. I've, I get a lot of love and, and um, attention over here, and I'm forever grateful. You know, it's such a this place, I've been coming to India now for 20 odd years. It's part of us. It is literally my home away from home. Um, and, you know, it's uh, Saurav Gurley said to me that night that I, I managed to get that 158 in that first opening game. He said, your life will never be the same. I didn't quite understand what he meant, but he's so, so right. Because when that, when that happened, I was sort of playing a little bit of international cricket. I, no one really knew sort of what I could do or who I was or whatever. But from that night onwards, um, India and myself have had a wonderful relationship, and and I'll forever be grateful for for the opportunity to have done it, and and obviously to to have learned so much from all the the people here in India um, and, uh, and and all around the world. So yeah, it's been it's been one of the one of the great things in life. It was the opening game of the IPL, and clearly, if that innings wasn't meant to be. It opened floodgates to what immense hitting can be in a game of T20 cricket. And clearly the IPL would not be the same without that innings. You should tell them that. <laughs> Give me some, some sort of royalties for that. <laughs> <laughs> um, if it wasn't me, it would have been someone else. Okay, and that, the, the, stage, the stage was created um, when you marry cricket with India, with Bollywood, you, you're going to get a stage for someone. I was fortunate enough with, I don't know why, it was, but that opportunity was pre presented to me on the opening night and the sliding door moments in your life and that was certainly one of mine and, and I'll forever be grateful and, and thankful for that opportunity. But if it wasn't me, then I'm sure it would have been someone else um, who who set, set the tournament alight. But who would have foreseen that 15 years down the track, the tournament that started that night is where it is today, which is just an incredible place, huge tournament, very successful. We've got teams who are deeply ingrained now in the the franchise, who are deeply ingrained in the in the hearts and souls of people all around the, all around the world, let alone here in India. So, just a tremendous story. No, you're being very modest, but we are very glad that it was you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. We do respect you for that innings. Bas ye bolna, ye hi tumara ad. Yeah, that's it. So yeah. Hmm. Now delivering in 10 minutes. RCB Innovation Lab, Leaders India Meet, first of its kind happening in India. And it's great to see you up on the podium. Uh, we love seeing you on the cricket field, but here you are as a speaker today. Talk to me about your biggest takeaways from this event. Well, obviously getting, you know, getting the opportunity to rub shoulders with some of the personnel that have been um, at this event, some of the speakers and, and listening to 
to their stories and and sharing some of the shared experiences that we've that we've had. So, you know, I think it's fantastic. Whenever you get enough like-minded people with slightly different views on things, but are in, in positions of leadership in a room together, you're always going to learn and and grow. So I've, I've really enjoyed it. It's obviously great to be back in India again, albeit for a fleeting visit, and just to see some of the, the warmth that you're showing when you get back here. And yeah, I, I look forward to, I guess, digesting some of the some of the experience I've had over the last couple of days here and, and seeing where they fit to, uh, to be able to add into, into my sort of leadership style as well. Much love and respect. Thank you so very much, Bas, for being part of the RCB podcast. Thank you very much. Big Basket Now presents the RCB Podcast.